Hello, welcome back to the Prison Frills channel. I'm Chloe, welcome if you have not been here before. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed so you are a part of our little curly community. But today we are gonna get started because it is a big video that you guys have highly requested, which is my full wash and style routine from beginning to end. We're gonna go from bonding, shampoo, conditioner, deep condition, styling, fluffing, you name it, it's gonna be in here. So we're gonna get started real quick today. So I'm gonna take it over to Chloe in the shower. Let's go. All right guys, welcome to my shower. Today we are going to be starting with the Bond Curl from Curlsmith. You wanna make sure your hair is nice and damp for this, but it doesn't need to be overly damp so you can wring it out if you get it a little bit too wet. A bonding treatment is extremely important, especially for bleached hair. Now I do have very bleached hair, so it is damaged. Oh, and right here I found a rogue bobby pin, of course, go figure. So a bonding treatment like this, the one from Carl Smith, or you can also use one from Olaplex, I will link right here my whole bond curl versus Olaplex showdown i recorded that last week so you guys can check that out if you want more details on it and i go really in depth on the whole process but today we're using bond curl because i also wanted the protein aspect now once you've got this fully in your hair i am going to braid this down just to keep it nice and put together while i do everything else in the shower because this needs to sit for about 15 minutes First, I'm gonna use my Necessaire Body Wash. It smells amazing, Ryan keeps stealing it from me, super rude. Then I'm gonna go in with my KP Bump Eraser. I love this stuff, I found it maybe a month or two ago, and I get those bumps on the back of my arm and on my forearm, especially during the winter. You can also use it on your butt to help smooth that skin too. Last thing I'll do with my 15 minutes is shave. I love my Billy, it's fantastic. All right, our 15 minutes is up. Time to rinse this out and do our wash and scrub. I'm gonna use the Carl Smith wash and scrub because it will get a deep cleanse on my scalp, but I can also use that on my hair. This is a great two-in-one product on days you want to get a nice, clarifying, deep wash. Today I'm also going to use Fanola's free no yellow vegan shampoo. So yes, I am going to double cleanse and I'm doing this normally every other wash so that I can really make sure I get a really nice toned, cool blonde. So we keep that on for one to five minutes, let it sit, you can tell it's very strong in color. Make sure to wash your hands so that it doesn't stain them and then you can go ahead and rinse it out. Look at that cool toned blonde, so good. So last step, we're gonna use the Sol de Janeiro brand new deep butter conditioning treatment. It is so good, it smells amazing, it feels amazing, it has a fantastic slip. Keep in mind, it does have silicone for my CGM followers in case you're trying to stay away from that. Personally, I love it though. So now here's a question for you. What do you prefer? Do you prefer to detangle with your fingers or do you prefer to detangle with a comb? Comment below, I'm really curious what you guys say. I am personally a huge finger comber through and through. It's okay if you have a lot of hair loss during the shower. Remember, it's perfectly normal to lose 50 to 100 hairs a day. So on curly hair, ours gets stuck in there until we wash it. So it's normal to have a lot of hair loss in the shower. Okay, we're rinsed, now let's start styling. Okay guys, here we are. So we are ready to start styling. As you saw, I already squeezed out some of that water so that I wasn't completely drenched. And now it's time to put in our stylers. So today, here's what we're gonna do because we use that nice deep conditioner. My hair should already be really nice and moisturized, but my hair loves moisture. So we're still gonna add a little bit, but we're gonna do a light leave-in. So I'm gonna use this Imbue. This right here, this leave-in is phenomenal. It's a really nice and lightweight, but it still adds some really nice moisture. So we're just gonna add this in on my ends for the most part, I think today. Right in there. And then I'm gonna add it a little bit right in here. I know a lot of you guys deal with a lot of crown frizz, so we're gonna try to get that all nice and moisturized. Okay, so we have in our leave-in now, and so the next piece, we always wanna go from leave-in to curl cream to gel, and then finally into maybe a serum or an oil to really seal in that moisture once. I normally do that once it's dry. 
Um, today we're not going to use an oil because normally on day one I will not use that unless I feel like it really needs that extra moisture or it's super humid out. Today I'm going to use Briogeo's Curl Charisma. This is their Chia and Flaxseed Coil Custard. I love this stuff. I've been using it for a while now. And as you can see, it's really quite thick. Um, and because I used that really intense deep conditioning treatment today, I don't know that I'm going to use much more than this right here. And we're going to focus it mainly on the ends because the more you focus a heavier cream, you can see, yeah. Um, the more you focus a really heavy cream like this, more towards your roots, you're probably going to have a little bit more of some way down issues. So I'm just going to focus this more on that bottom half of my hair. And I just like to kind of pull that in, rope it in there, maybe bring my fingers in a little bit. We might even need a little bit more water. And I'm gonna pick out a little bit more, just about that much. And I am gonna bring that just ever so slightly right around the top crown area, but not a ton, just a little bit. And then I really like, you might even wanna flip over so you can flip over. You wanna make sure you get that area underneath your neck too. You don't want to forget about those curls because they tend to get really dry really fast, especially when you have clothing rubbing up against them. So I really like to make sure those are nice and moisturized and we don't want to forget about that. Now that we have that in, I'm going to go in with one of my tried and trues. I've shown this to you guys before. It is Carl Smith's Souffle. This one is 16 ounces. The other one is eight ounces. It's in a jar. This one works really nicely to squeeze out. And I like a lot of gel personally. So we are going to just kind of emulsify that in our hands a little bit. And again, I always start on my ends. And we're going to start in by roping and then finger combing that in. The nice thing with the souffle is it has a really nice slip to it. So it works really well to just make sure all those products are getting all the way in and coated really well. All right, we're going to add a little bit more towards the top right there. And so my hair gets everywhere because when I'm doing this, I tend to still find a lot of loose hairs from when I was in the shower. Now, what you'll see right now is I'm pretty, I'm kind of naughty right now. So I've got a lot of tangles. So to me, it's really important that you use a brush when you're styling so that you can get those snarls and those tangles out. Because if you don't, you're going to end up with a lot of extra frizz that we just don't necessarily want. Frizz is good. Frizz can be really fantastic for adding extra volume, but we want frizz that we make on purpose, not frizz that happens during the styling process. Okay, so now that we've got that in there, I'm actually gonna add a little bit more water before I bring through a brush. So we're gonna use our little handy dandy Flarisol spray bottle. I need two hands right now because I got a lot of product on my hands. And this just lets out a really nice, soft, amount of water to be evenly distributed and make sure that we still don't dry out too much while we're styling. So we're gonna start at the ends and then move our way up. I love this brush. This is, um, which one is this? So this one's from Tangle Teaser. It, I've been using this for probably about five or six months at least now and I absolutely love it. I think it gets through my curls really beautifully without pulling on them or feeling like I'm gonna break my brush. I think all curlies understand that feeling. God, it's crazy. My hair has gotten so long. It's like already like it's almost off frame, which is insane when it's really wet. Now I'm gonna go the other way. Now when I'm not filming, a lot of times I will even do this upside down. So I might even do that here in a second. So when you're brushing through like this, this is also helping to make sure that all your product is really nice and evenly distributed. Because if you don't, you might miss some spots. And so, especially in the back, I will find that's where I tend, if I do miss a spot, it's in the back. Because you're not seeing that, you're not paying as much attention to it, and then the back tends to get frizzier faster. So having a brush and brushing through that product after you've applied it with your hands is super helpful to make sure everything is really nice and evenly distributed. And along with that, gets rid of any extra tangles and frizz. Okay, so now that we have brushed through our product, we're now going to separate into sections. I take about half of my head 
and take that top half, loop it around here, and then we're gonna take our handy dandy, our handy dandy alligator clip, here we go, and we're just gonna clip that right on the top of our head. So now we've got that bottom layer that we can really focus on and start styling. And this is where we're gonna start my finger coiling. And if you're not familiar with my finger coiling, I actually did a video on this specifically um, back, it's probably almost a year ago that I did that video. So I wanted to do a newer video where I know a lot of you ask like, okay, can you do the finger coiling process a little bit slower? So I am gonna show you a little bit more in depth how I do that so you get to see the start to the finish. We're gonna take this side piece. We're gonna brush through. Notice I am brushing out, not down. That's gonna help make sure that the hair stands out from our head and adds some volume by our scalp rather than going down and that's gonna help it dry a little bit further out, not dry down stuck to our head. So you can see I have lots of nice product in there. You wanna make sure your hair is nice and saturated. Now, when you finger coil, I want you to think about too how thick and curly your hair is. If you have really thick curls and you want a lot of volume, you can do some smaller pieces like this and that's going to actually help add to your volume. But if you have really thin hair and maybe like wavy texture, you probably are gonna want some thicker pieces so that they don't turn out stringy. So keep that in mind when you're playing around with the finger coils, because it, it might take a few times for you to figure out what works best for your hair specifically. So right now, I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna zoom in for you guys and slow this down so you guys can really see. So right now I'm finger coiling towards my face, okay? And that's kind of what that's gonna look like. Now, on occasion, a curl might not work the way you want it to work, okay? So it might be a little wonky. So if we go through here and I find a wonky curl, which I normally do find one or two, then I'll show you guys <laughs> kind of like how I finesse that to make it work. So I like to go through section by section as I'm finger coiling. Normally I'll go through and I probably go through maybe six or seven times I turn my finger before I let go. And as you can tell, I got pretty long hair, so it's gonna change depending on how long your hair specifically is. And you can even change how, how much hair you put into each curl. Maybe you want a little bit of a variation. Maybe you want some thinner curls. Maybe you want some thicker curls. Maybe you want them all the same size. It really doesn't matter. It's your preference and what you want. And that's the kind of beautiful thing about curly hair is you can really do whatever you, just do whatever you freaking wanna do because it's what makes you happy and not anybody else. All right, so now I got that front little piece right here done. I'm gonna actually take that back other half on the right side of my head, grab that, and I'm gonna start cur finger coiling the ones on the back of my neck. So I'm gonna take those, I'm gonna see, hopefully you guys can see this a little bit better. But I got these down here, and normally I'll just kinda do a nice little coil back there. And we'll just start working on those curls. And we'll start moving forward and up. Now, as you're doing this, if you find that you're feeling like, mm, when you pull your hands through your hair as you're doing this, and if you feel some pieces that are maybe not feeling very smooth, that's when I will take my brush again and I'll just go through and just try to smooth that out a little bit more until it feels smooth again. And then you can restart. And you just kind of keep going with that pattern. Now, once you've gotten through that section, what I like to do is I like to take a little bit more gel. Now, one of the, my favorite things to do is I like to stack my gel sometimes. So one of my favorite ones, especially during the winter, Anytime I have extra humidity or dryness, this bad boy is amazing. This is the Kinky Curly Curling Custard, and it's really nice and thick. It's a strong gel, so know that it's a stronger hold. And I'll just take a very small amount. So I'll just take a little small amount like this, and 
then just rope that into that section like this and then scrunch it till I feel like I got a really nice, you can see some cream coming out and that's okay. That means my curls are really nice and saturated right now. And then once I've done that, I'm going to take my little microfiber towel, I'll link this below for you, and I'm just gonna scrunch that towel to get any excess product out, any excess product and any excess water. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna help our dry time. <laughs> we want to keep our dry time as little as possible because I cannot stand having wet hair and I also cannot stand diffusing for too long. It drives me crazy. So if I can do anything to help myself with that, that's what I do. And so you can see already, I'm gonna show you at the bottom, you can see already how much more defined that side is versus that side. Can you see the difference? As you can tell too, it's not changing my curl pattern. And that's one of the things that I wanna clarify. We're not change, trying to change your curl pattern. What we're trying to do is just make your curl pattern as best as it can possibly be. And finger curling can really help with that, especially to help with longevity in your curls. So if you normally are like, oh, well my hair looks frizzy after day two. Well, if you try finger coiling and you find that it works for you, you might be able to get four to five days out of your hair versus two days because it's gonna help really streamline that frizz so that you're not feeling like it's an absolute mess after just one or two days. So finger coiling can actually give you back more time. I know it seems like it takes a lot of extra time to do it on your wash day, but if you think about it, if you spend 20 extra minutes finger coiling on your wash day, but you get maybe three or four more days out of your hair, to me, that's worth it. I only wash once every five to eight days normally. To each their own, I'm not saying you have to finger coil by any means, but I've found this works very, very well for me and I know it's worked for a lot of you. Now I'm gonna go through real quick and do this other side and I'll be right back and show you how I am going to split up the next piece. Okay, so now we have both sides done. So we're gonna take this back down and now we're gonna separate the back half of the top. Fill in with your fingers and I just twist that back little piece to keep that separated from what we've already done. And then we're gonna twist this piece right back up and we'll restart. So for this, I will also separate it half and half again, just helps me work in smaller pieces. We're going to brush that out again, twist that to the side, and now I'm gonna start working on that right side again. So you grab a piece and it's like this. You see how those are kind of separated? You wouldn't wanna just go ahead and go with that because it's gonna look a little funky and those are gonna be all different curls that are gonna separate anyways. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that because what finger coiling is also gonna help you do, it's going to help you from having to go through and separate all these clumps later on too. A little bit of gel, scrunch that in. This area doesn't seem as wet so I'm not gonna go through with a towel quite yet. Let's move on to the front top last section. So. I break this into three sections and normally I'll break it up right here and right here, okay? Because I tend to part my hair normally right over my left eye, right in there. So we're gonna start with this right hand side. Now this is starting to get a little bit dry. I notice my front pieces start to get drier first while I'm styling. So I'm just gonna bring a little more water in there, brush it out again, make sure all the tangles out. So we're going to continue going out. And what you'll notice as I'm finger curling, notice I coil out and let the curl fall. That is again helping to add extra. Do you see how this curl is sticking out around my scalp right here? That is how that curl will dry then. So if you had of done that same type of thing, but instead you coiled down, it's going to bring it down by your scalp. So we want to keep everything really nice and out and then let it fall naturally. If we go in by your hairline, 
you are going to want to go, I typically go smaller by my hairline because those curls tend to be a little more finicky and they like to separate. So we'll just let those kind of do more of their own thing. Now what you'll see with these curls right in here, you see how I did a little bit of a bigger piece and they're already separating on the front. To help with max definition, I'm actually going to separate those out a little bit more, add just a touch of gel, smooth that out, and I'm gonna break those up into two. This one's still separating, but I think that's gonna be okay. The curls by her face are always super, super finicky. I'm gonna fast forward and do these two other areas and then I will be right back to show you how I diffuse. Okay, we are officially fully finger coiled. So now I'm going to go through and just take my little lovely towel and just scrunch any of that little bit of excess moisture that could be left out before we start diffusing. Now, if you are new here and haven't watched my previous diffusing tutorial, I am going to link it above so you can check that out because I go in extreme depth there about my tips and tricks for diffusing so that you can have max volume and definition. Now, today I'm going to show you a little bit of my diffusing techniques here, but the main thing I wanted to show you today with diffusing is that I have switched over in the past few months to this guy. This is the Dyson. I love this because it's really small, compact. This is magnetic, and I actually really enjoy the diffusing portion to this. Now it does have other adapters, but I never use them. Over here, you have your different heating components as well as your different components for how strong your airflow is. And you also have a cooling for part right here. So you can go no heat to high heat, very, very low for the blowing intensity. And then you have on off here as well as cooling. So one of the key things while you're diffusing is you don't want to just sit in one place for a long period of time. You maybe want to sit for about 10, 15 seconds in one spot and then move that dryer around. You don't necessarily want to be like, okay, I'm going to sit here for like a whole, a whole minute. That's going to be way too much. First off, you're going to get really hot. Second off, it might dry your curls in a really wonky position and you're not going to get max definition. So we're going to move that around and then we flip around as well to make sure that we're getting extra root volume really important and it's also going to help add extra airflow into your curls as well. It may add a little bit of frizz, but we really counteracted any extra frizz by doing the finger coiling. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the things that you'll see too when I am going towards the scalp is I'm going to bring it right to my scalp and then I'm going to just slowly do a few little circles and that's going to add to extra circulation. But we're not going to like do it crazy. We're just going to do it nice and slow right around there because it's going to add that extra volume and it's also going to add extra venting, flowing, etc. Now I'm gonna get my hair to dry up to about 50% and then I'll check back in with you guys. Okay, so we are about that 50% of the way dry. It's looking good. We've got a few curls that are grabbing onto each other and what we're gonna wanna do, just like what I was doing there, is we're gonna wanna separate them. But fight with all your might not to separate them at this stage because you don't want to add extra frizz until they're dry and then you can easily pick them apart. So we're gonna leave those all nice and clumped. You see how they like kind of all found each other? We'll just leave those. Now I'm going to get us about 90% to 100% dry and I'll check back again. Okay, we are fully dried. I would say it's probably right at that like 95% dry. So there's still a little bit of moisture kind of towards my scalp. So what I'll do is I will actually go in at this point then, and I will just barely separate any of those curls that have found each other. I'm just looking in a mirror right now. Cause if you can see like these ones have all found each other. So we're just gonna gently find where those separate. And those are the set curls that we already defined earlier when we were finger coiling. So they should be really nice and easy to separate. 
and that's gonna just add to our volume and look at all that, look at all that definition, all that volume. And what I like to do next is while I would be doing my makeup, I will take one of these alligator clips and I, because I do have bangs basically cut in, these really short layers that I can style as bangs or I can style them back. So right now, I would let it dry the rest of the way, that last 5%, and just style my bangs, kind of letting them loosely sit back there while I would do my makeup. So I'm going to go get the rest of the way ready, and then I'm gonna come back once I am 100% dry, have my makeup on, and then we will go through any final little things that I would do. Okay guys, I am back. We have a full face of makeup on and we are 100% dry now. So there are a couple things that I still like to do to just add that extra little bit of like va 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 boom. So one of those first things that we're gonna do is doing a little pick action, okay? So if you don't have a pick, this one <laughs> has been through the ringer. It was bent and now, oh no, it's bent on that side still and as you can tell, this is now broken. I think I need to go invest in a new pick. They're not expensive. I think this one is under $5. I'll link it below. But um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into sections. I like to kind of start right above my ears and then right over here kind of above my temples. So we're gonna go kind of flop the hair this way, right above the ears. And you can see there is some volume in there, but not a lot. So I'm gonna stick this in and pull out. Stick in, we're really gonna stick by the root and we're just gonna kind of pull that out to add that extra oomph right on the side. We're gonna take a little bit more hair over there, split it right there, kind of over that temple area, like I said, and just pick it out. We're doing this slow. So right in here, up, we're doing basically up and out, and we're targeting those roots specifically. So we don't mess up all that work we did to get that beautiful definition. But as you can see, look at how much extra volume we were able to get just on day one. That is the goal. We love good day one hair. It doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be super small. I know that's one of the problems a lot of us have is that day one just doesn't have the volume we like. So we're gonna make that volume happen. And we're just gonna keep going in there. Now, because I do tend to put my part right here, I'm just gonna go directly underneath that part and not get too close to it. And then we're gonna flip Flip right over and get right in there. Flip it back. And now we have some added volume. Now, if you want a little more volume, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna grab yourself a dry shampoo. One of my favorite ones to use on day one, day two, because it does not add hardly any buildup, is this one by Verb. So this is their blonde version of their dry shampoo. They also have a brunette version as well. So we are gonna take this. You can see actually, if you look here, I don't know if you can see, but in the cap, it actually has a slight blue tinge, which is really interesting. So we're gonna go in there in the same spots that we added our pick, we're gonna go in with a little extra dry shampoo. Just a little bit right in there. And then we're just gonna zhuzh it like this, right with our fingertips like we would with a brush. We're just gonna really shake up in there and that's gonna amp it up even more. Shake, 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 shake. Shake your booty. And we're gonna do that other side. Shake, shake, shake. Okay. So by doing that, we've really added a lot of extra volume. I'll put a little picture here of what it looked like before, but it makes a huge difference. And I love that because it adds more volume on top and we don't get as much heaviness on the bottom. So I find this really helps. And the last thing is if you do feel like you need a little extra seal, like an emollient, an emollient is what's gonna seal in that hydration that you've already put in your hair and not let it escape. You can add an oil or a serum. One of my favorites is this one right here. This is by Verb, their ghost oil. The reason I like it is because it's really lightweight and it actually does contain silicone. I've talked about this one before many times. I think it's actually in my favorite styling products review. I highly recommend this. I'm not gonna add it to my hair today because I feel like I'm very highly moisturized today. So I don't wanna add any extra like shine or any extra weight because it is that beginning of my hair. I'll probably add this on day two or three or later on. 
So, but just so you know, if you do feel like you need something like that, you can add this. It's really good if you're in a super high humidity type climate as well to seal things in. But you guys, that is it. That's the video today. So I hope you really enjoyed this. Please tell me what your biggest takeaway was today. What did you learn? I love hearing that from you. So please comment below. And then also, if you haven't already, add that thumbs up. It lets YouTube's algorithm know that you really enjoyed this video and that you think other curlies would enjoy this video too. So thank you for being here. I appreciate you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye guys.